Hello and welcome to Ampience. In this video guide, we will be walking through the specific features that you will experience on your journey in the on-demand portal while you are building and creating and managing your content. Please sign in using the credentials that have been provided to you by the Ampliance provisioning team. Once you're logged in, you will notice that you have landed on the content modules dashboard. If you are logging in for the first time, this area will be blank. If you are logging in subsequently, you will note pre thumbnail previews of the content modules that you have created to date. There are three sections that you will be working in throughout your Ampliance journey. Content, where you will be creating your content modules. Publish, where you will be assigning your content modules into publish areas and publishing them out into your FTP or CDN buckets. And assets, where you will be uploading, organizing and managing all of your digital assets inside the Ampliance Digital Asset Manager. Ampliance is built on a fast and responsive fluid grid layout. The system provides a very simple UI for managing and organizing your assets. The responsive grid layout combined with the ability to close the left hand menu allows maximum space on the screen for you to view your assets and your content and your areas accordingly. There is also a highly optimized infinite scroll functionality with performant loading of image thumbnails from our very own dynamic imaging servers where the caching of the thumbnails saves reloading when scrolling up and down. You will notice in each section that you are working in is a contextual tools menu. The options that you see and the tasks that are related to the specific section that you're in will only be visible to you if the permissions have been activated for you accordingly. Let's start with the content section, the content dashboard, and let's see what a typical content creation journey looks like in Ampliance. Step one is to create a brand style. Click on your brand styles and you'll notice that there will be a default brand style for you to work in, which you can go in and update accordingly. Inside your brand style, you have the option to set your color scheme, your fonts, both custom and system, and of course, your textiles based on the color schemes and the fonts that you have uploaded in your styling. Once you've set your brand style, you can create your content template. Now, the best way to think of a content template, if you're unsure, is essentially think of it as an engine in much the same way that the engine of a car will determine how that car will perform and behave. Thus is the Ampliance content template, which also determines how the content module into which the template is assigned will essentially behave when it is on your website. The system is delivered with a default content template, which you are able to duplicate and then update accordingly. When you load your template, you will note that there are very specific features available to you. You can plug in your brand styles, you can rename, and you can toggle certain features on and off. There are specific sections in hub.ampliance.com in the video channel and the user section that will go through each and every single one of these features available to you in your template and your styles in great detail. The feed section is where your developers or your technical integrators will come in and will essentially set up your data feed. Once you've set up your framework, you've set up your styles, you've set up your templates, you've got your data feeds configured, if you're using data, you're essentially ready to start producing content. Creating new content is simple in that you create new content by clicking on the button. Assigning your template, your region for font characters, 
and the size, width and height of your module. Once you have created your module, think of your module essentially as the container into which everything else that you build, into which your carousel, your features, your hotspots, your buttons, your data will be built into. This is where all the creative happens. Hover over your cog, you click on edit content. This will launch the Ampliance Authoring Studio. There is a very detailed section on hub.ampliance.com in the user section. Under the Authoring Studio section, there are equally a stack of videos that you can review, which will go through every single one of these features and every single one of the steps that you need to, to follow to create and use each of these features and each of these elements. Please do visit the hub for this. Inside the Ampliance Studio, everything will have a contextual menu. There are tools that are available to you to use based on your templates. What we'll do very quickly is we will upload the background image. And as you can see, very quick to do. Once you have created your, con your content, click Save. And your content module is now ready to publish. You will need to assign your content into a publish area. Assign to an area. Area slot 1 that has already been set up for you. You can now go into the publish dashboard and you will see a preview of your content assigned into your publishing area. Your publishing areas equate to eSpots on your site and for each eSpot that you generate, for each publish area that you create, there is a unique, global unique identifier that is used for embedding content on your page. In the developer section on the hub, there is a great detail um, around how to embed content. Please direct your developers to that section to ensure that your content is embedded correctly. When you are ready to publish your content, you can assign a connector. This will have been set up for you by Ampliance. And when that content is ready to publish, you can click on publish and you can either publish now or you can schedule for the future. This is great if you don't wish to come in on Halloween at the witching hour. Hit publish, we will add it to the queue and your content will be queued for publish. Finally, let's take a look at the most powerful aspect of the Ampliance Adaptive Media Platform, the Ampliance Digital Asset Management System. Click on Assets in your toolbar and you'll end up in your DAM. The Ampliance Digital Asset Management System is built to scale to millions of assets for each customer. To view your assets, you have a thumbnail size selector in the DAM, which allows you to select from four preset sizes of images. This will allow you to see more or less assets on the page. The menu selector is up at the top right next to the upload button. Working in your DAM, features like hovering over a file name and having a tool to present the full file name is particularly useful when a file name is long and truncated. Equally useful are the icons above an image that allow you to quickly identify the type of media that you're looking at, for example, a photograph, a document or a video. If you have got dynamic media enabled and you have the ability to publish an asset, to publish your media, you will also have modals that will indicate to you the status of that asset published, for example, a green tick for a successful publish. When you select the properties action from an asset, the enhanced properties panel will be displayed. The Properties panel will display key information about your selected asset, including the asset name, the asset type, associated actions, publishing status for dynamic media, the ability to add tags, as well as details such as the folder in which the asset is stored, file size, width and height, and so on. Clicking on the Metadata panel, enables you to view the associated metadata for that particular asset 
that you have uploaded into your system. Metadata in the DAM is incredibly powerful in that it helps you search and discover, manage, organize your digital assets in a very sophisticated way. This is particularly useful from simply being able to find assets based on their product data, such as category, for example, through to automatic, advanced set generation based on file name or indeed workflow status. The metadata that is associated into your asset can cover any type of information that you want, for example, product data, marketing information, or even EXIF camera data. Your metadata starts to become incredibly powerful in driving the search and discovery of your assets inside your DAM. You can perform basic searches based on, say for example, the asset name, um, or some of the basic metadata associated to it. Alternatively, you can perform some really advanced, complicated searches. Please refer to the Hub separate guidance on how to do this. Hovering over an asset enables you to perform single-click primary core asset actions against that particular asset. For example, the ability to publish an asset if you have dynamic media actioned, the ability to download an asset if you have permission to do so from the asset store, which will go straight to your desktop. Or the ability to perform secondary actions by hovering over the cog, for example, being able to see the metadata, create spin sets, for example, or delete an asset. If you do not have permissions, as I do not in this case, you will see that that particular action has been deactivated. To upload an asset, click on the upload button on the top right hand side of your screen. You'll be presented with a light box with multiple options from where to load your assets in. There are external sources like Flickr, Picasa, Google Drive, Dropbox and so on. Or alternatively, select My Computer and choose your relative files that you wish to upload into your system. A progress bar will display and on successful upload, the asset will load into your asset management system. The Amplians platform enables you to organize your content, whether it's assets, content modules or areas, into a series of folders that enable you to find your content very, very quickly. To create a folder, type in the name of your folder in the folder field, select new and create your folder. Select the folder that you wish to create a subfolder into, type in the name in the folder bar and new subfolder. When you are ready to assign your content into a relative folder, select the content that you'd like to assign, hover over the cog secondary action, assign the folder and select the folder where you want your content to be moved into and click assign. Organizing and managing your assets in your DAM into folders is incredibly useful, especially when you are working with hundreds and thousands, if not millions of assets on a day-to-day -day basis. A more sophisticated and enhanced way of organizing and managing your assets is by using the Amplian's asset stores. Asset stores are comparable to folders, but the difference is that you can lock these down by setting permissions on them. For example, creating an asset store that has only view access for particular individuals inside the team, or alternatively in the future, you will have the ability to provide specific access to external organizations. This is controlled by administrators within the company, within a team, who will determine who has access to those stores. The Ampliance Adaptive Media Platform is incredibly sophisticated and the features that we have covered in this video have been done at a very high level. For much more advanced tutorials and guidance on how to use the specific features inside your asset management system, content templates, content modules, or to understand how to set up your publish areas, please visit hub.ampliance.com. Thank you.